Hello everyone, welcome to Steph Tensor Yoga. I'm super excited to practice with you. All right, on the agenda today, we have Iyengar Yoga Headstand, a practice for beginners. Okay, so I've put together this sequence, this, this collection of poses, specifically with those um, students who are not yet very comfortable or adept with shirshasana, with their headstand. Okay, so whether you can do it or not, or maybe not yet, that's totally fine. This sequence, these poses, these presentations will help you along. Okay, shirshasana is one of those poses, headstand is one of those poses, it is a journey. Okay, so be kind to yourself, listen to yourself, your, the feedback that your body is giving, giving you. Um, laugh at yourself, have fun along the way, um, and yeah. All right, so let's, let's jump right in, let's get to it. Stand with your feet about hip distance apart, so just give yourself a little bit of space between your legs here. Okay, tadasana in your legs. Shift your weight slightly back and stand on your heels. Okay, then press down into your heels. Lift your kneecaps, lift your thighs. Move your thighs back, but buttock forward, right? From the front of your thighs, move back, but at the same time, mid buttock forward. Okay, then broaden through your collarbones, roll your shoulders back and extend down through your wrists, Tadasana. Okay, now from here, Urdhva Badangulyasana. Reach your arms straight forward, interlace your fingers, and turn your palms inside out. Okay, now continue the Tadasana action in your legs. Move your thighs back, buttock forward, and then extend through the underside of your arm into your wrists and raise your arms up. Now from your wrist, lift the sides of your waist. Create space between each row of ribs and reach higher and higher. Press down through your heels, reach up through your wrists. And now move back, move those arms back. And as soon as you bump up against some resistance, broaden across your upper back. Okay, move the right shoulder blade to the right, left shoulder blade to the left by turning your upper arms. Right, rotate them, then reach higher and move back more. Lift, rotate, go back more. Check in with yourself, right? See that you're not letting all the weight come forward. Thighs back, buttock forward, lift higher, higher, higher into the wrists, arms back a bit more. Okay, and then release. Reach down through your fingers, stand up tall, Tadasana. Okay, let's go again. Reach your arms forward. This time, change the crossing of your fingers, right? So you're just going to, I'll come close to show you, you're just going to change the crossing, okay? So you'll always do the same one naturally first. Just change it up, okay? And now second attempt here. Extend and making the underside of your arm really long here, like a big circle, raise your arms up. Extend, now think equal and opposite. Down through your heels, up through your wrists. Move your thighs back, buttock forward, lift higher. Now, rotate your upper arms. Turn those upper arms and broaden across your upper back. And then with that breadth, with that width, can you move the arms back even more? Okay, and again, check in with your legs, right? Because a lot of times as the arms go back, the weight tends to come forward like this. So insist that the thighs go back. Be on your heels and at the same time, reach up through your wrists, arms back, arms back, chest open. Okay, and then release, Tadasana. Okay, now let's do Parjva sideways. Okay, reach forward, pick a crossing, exhale, arms up. Come to where we left off. So again, down through your heels, up through your wrists, lengthen the right side, lengthen the left side. Okay, now from here, hinge yourself to the right side. Okay, hinge to the right. 
lengthen the underside of your body, lengthen the top side. Okay, now sometimes the elbow likes to go soft here. So squeeze the elbows in, reach into those wrists and move your arms back ever so slightly. Turn yourself from right to left. Turn the abdomen in that direction. Okay, and then again, come back up. Exhale, second side. Shift over to the other side. Okay, check elbows, keep them straight, lock them in, move those arms back. Okay, lengthen through the underside of your body, lengthen through the top side, and arms back, chest open. Turn your abdomen this time slightly from left to right. Okay, and come back up, and then release. Arms by your side, chest up, Tadasana. Okay, now if you are comfortable doing so, join your legs, okay? If you find that stability is an issue, you can still work with your legs a little bit apart, but if it's good for you, legs together, and now Tadasana. Okay, we're going next into Gomukhasan. We're exploring some different shapes, different sensations in the shoulders, um, because for headstand, for Shirshasana, obviously, this is really important, right? The shoulder actions, the upper arm work, the back body, it all is gonna play a really important role. Okay, so to begin with here, reach your right arm to the side. Okay, notice that my hand is, it's not up at the shoulder height, but a little bit lower, so that's intentional. Okay, and then turn your thumb to point towards the ground and roll your shoulder forward. Okay, roll it forward. Now keeping that rotation, swing your arm up your back. Swing it up your back. And then you can use your free hand and even uh, further encourage that hand to go up. Okay, now notice where your hand is touching your back. Okay, feel that for yourself. Is it all the way over on one side? Is it centered? Okay, just check it out and know that the intention here is for the hand to be centered and the fingers pointing upright. Okay, now from your collarbone to your shoulder corner, right here, broaden. Okay, broaden this area and roll that shoulder back. Okay, so when you're getting into the pose, you're rolling forward, but now that you're here, lift. Okay, roll that shoulder back. The armpits, side chest area here has to lift up. Roll it back, more and more. Okay, now keep that. Extend your left arm straight up to the ceiling and lengthen the whole side body. Reach up, reach up. Now turn that palm towards your face and back. Okay, towards your face and back. And again, feel what happens to that shoulder blade as you do that. Okay, turn it, now lift up, lift up, lift up. Move the arm back and then bend, bend. And see, can you reach your hands towards one another, right? Take hold of your fingers. If you can reach the first knuckle, go for the second knuckle. If you can reach the second knuckle, maybe you can hold your wrist. Okay, keep going. Now, if you can't reach, you can also use your t-shirt. Use your t-shirt. You can use a belt, but today I'm gonna teach just using whatever you can touch here without the belt. Okay, now on this top arm, avoid letting the elbow go wayward. Roll it in, okay? Rotate that upper arm and keep that broad sensation through the top shoulder blade area there. Okay, reach up through your upper elbow, down through the lower elbow, then draw both elbows into the midline, and right where your hands are on your back there, push into the back, open your chest. Okay, tadasana in your legs, knees back, thighs back, buttock forward, down through the bottom elbow, up through the top elbow, wrists, fists, palms into your back, and chest open, gomukhasana. Okay, release, extend down. Okay, now work it out here. Okay, maybe it's tough on the wrist, maybe whatever, right? You might feel something. So now stretch it out, stretch it out here. Reach into those fingers. All right, and then release. So second side here. So now same idea, but we're gonna start with the left hand. Okay, reach the left arm to the side. Roll your shoulder forward, thumb goes down. Swing the arm up your back. 
Okay, and then use your free hand, use it and maneuver that hand even higher up your back. Okay, now careful not to drag the shoulder down, right? This happens sometimes for some people as you're in your effort to get this hand higher up, right? What happens is this, you kind of, uh, you lean, right? You pull this shoulder down as you're trying to get it up. But I want the two armpits to remain level, okay? So broaden this collarbone and roll the shoulder back. Keep the armpits level here, okay? Now, second side, second arm here. Raise your left arm up to the ceiling. Sorry, your right arm up to the ceiling, reach, 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 and then turn your palm towards your face, move the arm back and bend, and bend, and see where you get to, okay? You may notice here the sides are very different. So just observe that, take notice of that. Now reach down through the bottom elbow, up through the top elbow, draw both elbows into the midline, and then press your hands into your back, open your chest. Okay, that top elbow, don't let it go wayward. Roll it in, roll it in, crawl your fingers down your back more, hold the next knuckle, see where you get to. Okay, on the bottom shoulder, roll that shoulder back again. Move your hands into your back, chest open. Go Mukasan. Okay, and then release, undo yourself and work it out in Tadasan. Okay, staying with the theme of shoulders, staying kind of with a, a focus here on that area, let's now do the arms of Gerudasana, okay? So extend your arms out to the side and just have your palms facing forward. So you can see the inside of my hand here is facing the camera, okay? And extend away, extend into your fingertips. Okay, now from here, do a little bit of dynamic movement here. Cross, 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 cross. Now each time you cross your arms, see if you can cross a little closer to the body. Okay, a little bit. Instead of crossing just here, you're crossing really close to the body. Okay, so keep going, keep going. Few more times here. And then the next time your left arm ends up on top, Pause there, okay, pause there. Now bend your elbows, bend your elbows, and clap your hands, okay? Wrap, okay, now lift your elbows up and move your wrists away from your face. And again, observe the sensation across your back body there. Okay, so Garudasan, drop your shoulders down, reach into your elbows, just lift the elbows up a little and move your wrists away from you. Okay, extend the fingers, try to keep the hands straight. That's it, Gerudasan. And just for now, for today, Tadasan legs, knees back, thighs back, buttock forward. Find that strength across your upper back. Elbows up, hands away. Okay, and then release, Tadasan. Okay, let's go for the next side. Okay, again, reach your arms to the side and do some crossing, right, like so. And this time when your right arm ends up on top, pause there, bend the elbows and clap your hands. Okay, then lift your elbows up and move your arms away. Lift your elbows up and move your wrists away from your face. Move them away. Find that broadening across your upper back. Feel what's happening there. Okay, feel that action. Elbows up, hands away. Okay, drop the shoulders. Broaden your upper back. Gerudasan. Okay, and then just undo. Your arms will sort of float out to the side. And then again, Tadasan. Okay. So now with that Gerudasan action in the upper back here in the shoulder blades, let's do a variation of Chaturanga Dandasan, recreating that, that strength and that broadening across the upper back. Okay, so first off, look at your hands or look at my hands. Okay, this is the wedge here between the thumb and index finger. And 
when we, we're gonna go to the wall, and when I have you put your hands on the wall, what I'm gonna speak to is this wedge and this idea of almost like turning a dial, right? So see the thumb starts here, and then it's as if I'm trying, let's just say the wall was here. I've got my hands on the wall, and it's almost like I'm trying to lift the wall up off the floor. Right, so I'm turning a dial a little bit. It doesn't mean that my hands are actually moving, but that's the sensation. That's like the, the energetically what's happening between my palms and the wall. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Let's go to the wall and I'll show you what's next. Okay, so you're gonna use some kind of flat wall here and you're gonna place your hands. So if you see my side view here, like this. Okay, so upper arm, perpendicular to the floor, and then you've got this kind of like a right angle to your forearms, like this, okay? And then you place your palms on the wall, forehead on the wall, and just be a little bit away from the wall. But see, see here how my buttocks is kind of like thrusting forward? I don't want that. Be on your heels, like find Tadasan action here. Really stand on your legs. Okay, now spread those fingers and connect your wrist, the base of your palm here, into the wall. And let your attention go to that thumb and index finger, that wedge there. Okay, let your elbows flare out just slightly. And now opening the wedge between the thumb and index finger, start to scoop the thumb up and draw the elbows in towards the body. And then push the wall and just remove your forehead from the wall, right? Push back. And then lower yourself like a plank to the wall again. Okay, let's try that again. Stand on your heels. Okay, move the thighs back, buttock forward, stand on your heels. Now again, just let the elbows go out slightly, push your hands into the wall and now lift the thumbs and try to scoop the thumbs up as you draw the elbows in, push the wall, come back off the wall. Okay, lower yourself back down. Now do this five more times. Okay, you can find your own rhythm here. As your hands are on the wall, right, you're, it's like you're turning that dial. My hand isn't moving, just my thumbs. Just my thumbs, I lift the thumb off and then like I'm trying to lift the wall up off the floor. Push back, come off, push back, come off. Okay, keep going, do a few more times and be particularly mindful here of the sensation, what's happening across the upper back. Okay, you can use this to start to develop strength. Develop the strength. Okay. Okay, moving along. Let's next do some preparatory work. We're going to set up the base, the foundation of Shirshasan, of headstand, just as we would do if we were going all the way up, but we're not gonna go up just yet. Okay, so first thing, interlace your fingers. Okay, you're gonna interlace your fingers right down to the webbing, right down to the webbing there. Okay, and then just let the fingers be soft and cross one thumb over the other. Okay, now the small finger just stays on the bottom, stays on the bottom. Okay, don't tuck it in underneath here, but just keep it under, uh, like so. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is place your forearms on your mat like this. Okay, and you can just shift your knees back a little bit for right now. Now, I lift my one forearm up a little bit off the ground, rotate my upper arm and catch my outer elbow skin. I just catch the skin there so that I encourage, I continue to encourage this external rotation. Okay, and this forearm bone is right centered here. Okay, so I'm not like this. Can you, you know, you're not like this, but you're right on the very center of your forearm bones, okay? And can you stack the elbow under the shoulder corner, under the shoulder, right? So again, not too wide, not too narrow, but just in line there. That's what you're looking for, 
Okay, now the other thing to mention is this part here. This is the wrist and this is the underside of the wrist. Okay, and sometimes some, it buckles a little bit, some air can flow into there. So once your hands are down, I'm gonna tell you to lift the hand up and lengthen the underside of the wrist. Okay, so let's go again. And now just for fun here, change the crossing of your fingers. So the other small finger is on the bottom. Okay, go right down to the webbing. Hands, the fingers can soften, one thumb on the other. Keep space in your palms so you're not gripping like this. There's space in your palms. You can almost imagine that there's like a tennis ball or something in there. You wanna keep that shape. Okay, and then place your hands down. Okay, now go through this. Um, it's just good practice, right? Lift one forearm up, rotate your upper arm out, and as you lower yourself to the floor again, catch that outer elbow skin. Lift, rotate, do the same on the other side. Okay, check to see that your elbows are underneath your shoulders, you're not too wide, not too narrow, and then lift the underside of your hands. Just lift up a little bit and lengthen the underside of your wrist as you place your hands down again. Okay, so you're rolling your thumbs towards you. You're rolling the hands towards you. Okay, now very firmly press your forearms into the floor and even before you lift your knees and hips up, lift your shoulder blades, right? Slide your shoulder blades away from your neck. Okay, now tuck your toes under and lift your knees and hips up. Okay, push back. So we're in sort of like a modified dog pose, modified Advanasana. Okay, now what I want you to do here, it's a dynamic movement. You're gonna come forward, bring your chin beyond your hands here, and then push back. Okay, come forward, push back. And I want you to find your rhythm with this. Okay, come all the way forward, all the way back. All the way forward, all the way back. Keep going. Now press your forearms very strongly down. Push them down and then push back up. Okay, push the forearms down, chin forward, and then push the forearms down and push back. Keep going, few more attempts. Okay, every time you push back, can you move the shoulder blades more onto the body, right? You want those shoulder blades to go onto the body more and more. Penetrate this back body in towards the front body as you push back. Okay, rest as needed. Find your breath. And we'll go again, and there's a lot going on with this. So it's, you know, you may need to do a few attempts, but check to see what's happening. Okay, so a few things to look for, very common. One, that the wrists will collapse. Okay, so one, you start off like this with the space between your hands, and the next thing you know, you're doing this. Okay, so check for that and keep the space between your hands here. Okay, then also check to see what's happening with the elbows. Because again, you begin, you take that time, that care, you put the elbow right under the shoulder, right? But as you're working, did one elbow slip out? Did both elbows slip out, right? And then notice too, is it always the right one that's slipping out? maybe that side just needs a little more attention. It's like that side of the body has to do more yoga than the other side, okay? Press it down. All right, let's, let's start with that. Let's <laughs> focus on that and go again. Okay, so same thing here. Again, change the crossing of your fingers. Place your hands down, your forearms down, and lift, rotate your upper arm. Lift, rotate your upper arm and create that firm, solid foundation. Okay, then roll your hands towards you and lengthen the underside of your wrists. Okay, make a firm connection with your forearm bones. Press down and slide your shoulder blades away from your neck. Okay, now look a little forward. Look just beyond your hands here. Tuck the toes under and lift yourself up and back, up and back. Okay, now let's go for the dynamic movement. Bring your chin all the way forward and then push all the way back, 
all the way forward, all the way back. Okay, press those forearms strongly down, lift your shoulder blades up. Keep going, few more times. Notice if one elbow is slipping and insist that it stays in place. Okay, notice if your wrists are collapsing and again, keep that space forward and back. Every time you push back, absorb the back body into the front body just a little bit more. Okay, and then release. Okay, rest yourself. You can rest here. Admukha Virasan, head down. Okay, it's time to put the head down. We're doing a headstand. Okay, I'm gonna show you um, how to work at the wall in a corner. Okay, but before I just shift over to the corner, let's, let's get the head placement and the hand placement and everything um, all set up. Okay, so same foundation as before. Interlace your fingers, place your forearms down, and then do that same preparatory work. Lift the elbow, rotate your upper arm, catch the outer elbow skin. Lift, turn your upper arm, catch the outer elbow skin. And again, lengthen the underside of your wrists and press down. Okay, now still looking up, tuck the toes under, lift your knees up, lift your hips up, lift your shoulders up, okay? And then from here, you're gonna walk in from your hips, okay? So you're not just like doing the pumping leg before, but lift the hips up, walk in, walk in, walk in, and let your head come down. Okay, now press your forearms into the ground and roll, roll your hands into your head here. Roll towards you, okay? And this is where you're going to start. Okay, press the forearms down, lift the shelf of your shoulders up and be here for a moment. Pause here. Okay, let's do that again. Second side, change the crossing of your fingers here. Go down, build your base. Look a little forward, tuck the toes under, and now press your forearms, lift your shoulder blades away from your neck, and lift up, up and back, up and back. Okay, now walk in from your hips. Really roll the buttocks up, walk in, walk in, walk in, then just let the head go down. Place the crown of the head down and roll your hands into your head. Roll it in, roll it in. Okay, and be here for a moment. Maintain that lift to your shoulders. Okay, now from here, walk your feet together. And what I want you to do next is to work on Ekapada. You're still not kicking up, but the head is down. And from here, can you raise one leg up? Okay, challenge your shoulders. Press your forearms down, lift your shoulders, raise one leg up. Raise it higher and then lower down. Okay, pause here and then go for the second side. Raise it up, lift your shoulders, lift your leg. Lift your shoulders, lift your leg. And then release. Okay, and then slowly come down. Okay, that Ekapada variation, lifting one leg, uh, one at a time, it's really good practice. It's a really good way to start training the muscles to develop the strength that's needed for Shirshasana, okay? So practice that, carry on with that. Um, but for now, let's move on. Let's go to a corner. So you need a wall where there's an inside corner. I'll show you, okay? So here we are at the corner, like this. Place your mat right up against the corner. And I've just folded my mat in half. It's a pretty thick mat, so that's gonna give me some cushion. If you're using a thinner mat, you might want to fold the mat in half and then in half again, just so that you know it feels okay on your head. Sometimes people also like to practice with just an open mat and then put a blanket down for the head. That can also work. Okay, so you can experiment and see. And then you're gonna position yourself in the corner. Now, before I turn my back to you, okay, the knuckles here are gonna go right into the corner. So on the floor, right into the corner. 
but the upper arms and the forearms are gonna be positioned exactly as we've been doing in the practice so far, right? So the elbow is under the shoulder, even if the wall is over here, right? Don't feel like the elbows have to touch the, the side walls here. That's not what they're for, okay? The knuckles are into the corner and still the elbows are coming directly under the shoulders. Okay, got it? Okay, so here we go. Okay, interlace your fingers, knuckles are right up against the corner here, and you do everything we've done. Okay, rotate the upper arm, catch the outer elbow skin, and at the same time, lengthen the underside of the wrist. Okay, now looking up, looking forward at the knuckles, at the corner there, tuck the toes under, lift your knees and hips up, okay, push back. Really lift your shoulders. Okay, forearms down, lift your shoulders, lift your hips. Now slowly walk in. If you have some tightness in the hamstrings, right, you can bend your knees. That's gonna make it a little easier to walk in. Bend your knees, walk in. Roll the buttocks up, 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 and then start to straighten. Okay, now keep those shoulders lifted, and then finally, finally, place your head down. Okay, and I'm just gonna spread my legs here wide so you can see. You wanna be right up on the top of your head. Right? You wanna be straight. Okay, so I won't show you the wrong way to do it, but you don't wanna be leaning in funny ways. Okay, and then you can join the leg. Now roll your hands into your head and lift the shelf of your shoulders up. Okay, then from here, just raise one leg. Just feel it, feel what happens. Now notice you have the wall behind you. So as you raise one leg up, you might start to feel the corner. You might feel right side and left side touching the walls and then lower down. Okay, and then raise the other leg up. Okay, throw it, throw it, see what happens. See if you can come to the tip of the toe on the bottom leg and then down. Okay, now you can bend your knees and rest as needed. Okay, or you can keep going, raise that leg up. Now, if you wanna kick up, you wanna go all the way up, you're gonna bend the down leg. This leg stays straight. The lifted one is absolutely straight. See what I'm doing? Down leg is bent, lifted leg is straight, and hop. Just a hop with the bottom leg. That's it. Hop, and then see, can you get all the way up? Okay, now what's so beautiful about working in this corner is that the corner catches you. Right? The corner catches your hips. It's almost like it's holding you there. Okay, So the buttocks can go, uh, I mean, you don't really take the buttocks backs in this pose, but in a way with the corner there, it, it has that sensation. Okay, Press down through your forearms, lift your shoulders, roll your hands into your head. Okay, And then with your hips being held here by the corner, straighten your legs completely. Okay, feel like you can lift the back of your legs up. Okay, now maintain the lift in your shoulders and slowly lower one leg and just let that leg help the other leg to come down also. Okay, and then bend your knees and rest yourself, Admoka Virasan, head down. Okay, now after you're doing these inversions, always good. You don't want to pop back up and just start moving around. Just take a minute. Take a few breaths, head down, let yourself adjust. Okay, and then you can give it another go, especially when you're learning, learning how to kick up. You might need a few tries. Okay, so keep switching the crossing of your fingers so that, you know, you, be, you stay even, you develop both sides evenly. And let's go again. Let's do another one together. Okay, prepare your foundation, elbows directly under the shoulders, lengthen the underside of the wrist, now press the forearms, and even before you lift your knees and hips up, move those shoulder blades away from your neck. Okay, look a little bit up, keep those shoulders lifted, and then slowly walk in. Walk in from your hips, walk in from your hips. Lower your head down, reestablish that lift in your shoulders, and then again, one leg up. Okay, one leg up, just be there for a minute. One leg up, and then change sides. One leg up, one leg up, okay? And now you wanna kick, you can try kicking with the same leg or maybe you kick with the second leg. Bend the down leg, jump, jump, okay? Jump, let the other leg come with. 
And then again, push down, lift your shoulders, roll your hands into your head. Yeah, <laughs> keep the lift. And the buttocks is sort of held back. The hip corners are held back, but the middle of the buttocks push a little forward, right in the direction you're looking. Okay, spread your toes, spread your toe mounds. Reach up through your inner foot, inner heel, reach up through the back of your legs. Steady your gaze. Okay, now maintain the lift in your shoulders. Press your forearms, lift your shoulders, and then one leg and let the other leg follow. Bend your knees and head down. Okay, that's it. Congratulations. This is Shir Shasan. It's a really nice way I find to work. Feels very safe, you're contained in the corner. So you can carry on with that until you feel comfortable. And then when you're ready to move onward, you can do it just against a straight wall. So here you would have your hands just up against the wall like this and then kicking up too. Okay, so that's onward, but for now, um, yeah, see how you make out with this. Okay, you're welcome to continue practicing if you wanna pause the video and carry on, um, but I'm gonna move on for now. Okay, so we're gonna wind down, end the practice, um, but one thing to keep in mind, one thing that's always good to know in terms of sequencing is that if you're gonna incorporate Shirshasana headstand into your practice, then from an Iyengar yoga perspective, the way that we work is that you would always also include something from the shoulder stand family. Okay, so today I'm going to just show you um, Viparita Karani as an option within this sh shoulder stand family. Um, you did a lot of strong work with the shoulders. I'd like to give you something um, that you can really settle in, okay, because this will also be your Shavasana. Okay, so what I've got here is a bolster, two blankets, and a, and a brick. Okay, the brick is going to go like this against the wall. And then I'm going to take one of my blankets and make a triple fold, so just accordion fold it. I've opened it and accordion fold it like this and place it a little bit away from the brick here. Okay, the purpose here is to just angle the bolster a little bit so that it lines up with uh, the top of the brick there and there's like a little bit of, a, of an angle here. Okay, and then the next blanket is just to open up so that your neck and back of the head isn't on rubber, right? So that it's smooth. Okay, now if you're taller, longer, what have you, you may feel you need more height. You can always put something over top this setup, another blanket. Uh, this is what works for me, this is what I like. Okay, now from here, you can go in from the side or you can somersault in. I'm pretty sure in some of the other videos I've shown going in from the side. So today I'll show somersaulting in. Okay, you're just gonna come down here and then roll over and then you can slide down. Okay, what's nice about somersaulting in is that you end up really nice and high on your shoulders. Okay, and then the abdomen is soft here. You've got this nice platform. Okay, your legs can be right together. Your legs can be apart. You can do swastikasan, baddha konasan. Really, I leave it up to you. Okay, and then release your arms to your side. Okay, and just be here. Okay, now typically, you would stay for as long as you spend in headstand, also in shoulder stand. So if you did a five minute headstand, go for five minutes shoulder stand. And as I said, this is in lieu of shoulder stand today. It's in a similar family. And then when you're done, just bring your attention, your awareness slowly back to the surface. You can bend your knees and then slide back until your whole back is flat. And then you can just spend a minute here like this. You can keep your feet up on the wall or across your legs. Take Shavasana. And then roll over to your side, your right side. 
Let your eyes adjust to the light. And then using your hand, push yourself back up and come to a seated position. <clears throat> 